Hello, welcome back to How to RPG. Well, today it's all about Game Master preparation. Today is a work day, and before you, you see Esper's Emporium of Esoterica, which has actually got a lot of really well developed NPCs, uh, artwork, and uh, the information on them, even stat blocks in, in some cases. Uh, then we also have the, I would say, the definitive book for NPCs, and that is the Game Master's Book of Non-Player Characters underneath here. An excellent book. Uh, it has random tables and also has like just hundreds of NPCs that you can use in your game. So hopefully you find this useful to you. Uh, the other thing is we have another book which surprisingly is actually very good, and that is the Pathfinder Game Mastery guide this thing has a great section on building your own npcs but also a little bit on how to deal with your own villains as well but still an excellent book um and i just received a package today much to my surprise and um this thing is um sitting on the big pockets aj Pickett inspired this thing and it's now going to be sitting on my work desk from now on so you'll see it as a, a regular a regular thing the silicon battle mat that uh, really just survives pretty much everything. It's probably one of the best ones out there, I would say. And I will certainly show it off in the future. Anyway, hello Nick, how are you? So let's get into the, the topic for today. Hello big kid, how are you too? Now normally I put up a poll, and I will, but instead of doing that just just yet, I'm, I'm actually going to flick over to my, my face just briefly. And one of the things that has happened is... I have run non-player character building, creation, making NPCs many, many times, as you will be aware. And we've been probably the most called on ta uh, NPC is definitely the, the villain, like the villainous NPC. That's what people want help with. That's what people want information on. So I've brought a little bit of additional information today, but there's also something we started to build. We started to make it because nobody's made anything like this in the way that I would like to make it. And so we're going to probably do that after my presentation. Hello, uh, how's it going? Uh, Talon Victus. Hello, Talon Victus. So I'm going to put up a poll. And I'm, I'm, my, my question to you is, before I do my presentation, which I will, I will do in a second, so I will, I will go through my presentation as normal, and then we will make some Game Master tools. Like, we will actually make your villainous motivations. We've been doing monster motivations with the, the monster stream, but we're going to do specifically your villainous motivations because they're a little bit different. They're not quite the same as a monster, right? So, and we actually started that process, but we never finished it. So, um, have you made your own villains? I believe that is the question. And I will put that in there. And we'll go here, yes. Now, I would normally type this all in before I start, but I was a little bit slow today. Um, I'm going to... Um, well, the, the reality is I was watching somebody else's live stream, so I got distracted. That's what happened. That's what happened. So I'm not, I'm not trying to make a mess of my live stream so that everybody leaves who's jumped into here. That is ne 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 never the case. But yes, I am a little bit disorganized today. But trust me, this this should be worth the, the wait. Okay, let's get started, shall we? Ah, yes. There it is, good. Okay. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today... I want to talk about role-playing games because that's what we do here. <laughs> okay, so Game Master Preparation. This is Lesson 2, Building Non-Player Characters. I've run this program before. I'm going to run this program just a tiny bit different to what I've done in the past, for those of you who are interested. So the overview for today is, you know, quick non-player characters. Where can you get my the quick non-player characters for your game? Building non-player characters, like how do you go about building them? Making your NPC names or non-player character names up. Creating the, the motivations for your non-player characters. Or your villains. Specifically, people really want the villainous NPC. They want help with that. So we're going to do, we're going to double down on that topic for today for the entire two hours. 
uh, developing NPCs, their aspects to your NPC, uh, selecting the NPC appearance or creating the NPC appearance, constructing an NPC stat block, some recommendations, ways of doing this a bit easier, a bit quicker, and then some miscellaneous recommendations like I always do. Now my intention with any of these programs is uh, I want to explain how to build a non-player character for a role-playing game. doesn't matter what you're playing. could be Pathfinder, could be Dungeons and Dragons, could be anything. But we will be focusing, as I said today, on villains. Demonstrating how to build a non-player character or a villainist character for your role-playing game. And I'm going to allow you to actually have some practice at this. So you're going to actually be part of the process of building what we need. Okay? And uh, I've already started that process. Now, before I jump over and start talking about all the things I normally say... There are a few things that I need to, to point out, and that is that quite often a game master does not have time to build a non-player character or build the villains for their, their game, their adventures, their campaign. And so when you are stripped for, you know, strapped for time and you need assistance, the easiest way to craft a non-player character is actually to get someone else to make it for you in advance. That's that's the easiest answer to that. There's no other quicker way to do a quick non-player character or a quick villain. So the Game Mastery book of non-player characters has hundreds. Literally, I've done a review on this book. It has hundreds of pages of ready-made NPCs. But it also has many, many tables that allow you to make various types of NPCs or potentially villains as well. So that's a very good book. It's worth the money. It's worth the investment. You will use it if you have not enough time to make your own stuff and you need to use somebody else's stuff. Now, there's also the Pathfinder NPC Codex. Now, I don't have this book. It's full of pre-made NPCs. The only hassle is it's full of stat blocks as well for the Pathfinder First Ed Edition game. So there's still some, some fluff there. There's still images and stuff like that. So it still can be very useful to you. But if you're playing Pathfinder, that's a great book to grab. Any published adventure for your game system will probably have heaps of non-player characters that you can poach, steal, or borrow. And I suggest you do that. When you need to, when you see something that kind of sticks out for you and you like it, go use a pre-made adventure and take some of the NPCs out of that adventure. The internet is full of NPC generators that can make your non-player character with a push of a button in just a, a number of seconds. And there's a website called NPC Generator. You don't have as much control. I don't know that I necessarily like the NPCs that that create sometimes. Sometimes they just seem a bit hokey. But heck, like, at least it can be done quickly. So if you want just a quick press of the button, create me a random NPC, then you can do that with their NPC Generator. Uh, there's also the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters, which is another Jeff Ashworth book and it, the great thing about it is it has a percentile table at the back which allows you to randomly create your NPCs and potentially villains as well. It gives you a, a couple of different things going on, not just the name but a, a few other attributes. Um, obviously what they want or need or their motivation is in there as well. Okay, you need to have that there. On top of that, that book's great because it gives you a lot of locations as well. So it's not specifically designed for NPCs, but it does have a great resource in the back of the book. Okay, and as I said, the Game Master's book of non-player characters is probably the best resource out there with regard to that. Now that I've covered sort of how to do it quickly, let's go into like building a non-player character. Like how does that look? How do we go about doing that and making it work for us? Um, and... I think almost always when I do this, um, I wind up going over stuff you may have already come across before. And this is always the case, right? But hopefully there's something new here that you are going to find new and, uh, and that you can use. Okay, so building your non-player characters and doing the name generation side of things. Some of you will probably already have strategies for using this, um, uh, getting this done. So... A non-player character's name is the most important step, like if out of everything else, uh, which you can also get from an electronic name generator. Like there is a website called Fantasy Name Generator. It's probably one of the best resources out there for generating names, but it's not the only one. So if you struggle to create a name, you can use something like that. Uh, Donjon, D-O-N-J-O-N, the website has a fantasy name generator that you could utilize if you wanted to. 
The, the Master the Dungeon website also has a name generator under the Resources tab. So if you go to the top section of that website, so that's Master the Dungeon website. Then there's Marker's Forge Games website. It has a name generator, and it, you'll find it under the Generator section. Right, There's a Generators section. Go to that section, and it'll drop down, and you'll find it there. There's actually nothing wrong with just using a standard name that you know, or even an exotic name of people you've actually met before or that you know of. Uh, you can just do that very quickly. You don't have to make some ludicrous name that nobody can pronounce. It's not difficult to make a list of non-player character names. Once you have a tool in, at your disposal, once you spend a bit of time creating it, it's probably the one tool out of everything when it comes to the NPCs that you should have. A list of names. Uh, like there's a lot of people out there who've said, look, you need to have a list of names that will just solve a lot of your problems. And they're tr it's correct. It's true. Okay. You, even if you don't use them now, you'll use it later on. Uh, use the sample names offered in a role-playing game book, um, handbook. So, okay, you know, Player's Handbook for D&D often has sample names for different races or species or ancestries or whatever the heck you're calling them. Okay, So go use those names. Like under the races section, species section, there's also pop culture. Names from books, comics, movies, you can port those over to your role-playing game. And then, of course, Sly Flourish has a good example of a randomly generated sort of list of names. Now, he's listed it down, I believe, as a random name name generator list. But in fact, it's just a list of names that he's created and just made available on the Internet that you can use if you want to. So there's lots of ways of solving the problem of how do I get the name of my character sorted out or my villain sorted out? OK. The next probably most important aspect of your non-player character or your villains that you're creating is motivation. The motivation of any non-player character is vital for portraying and interacting with the player's characters. So pull a simple motivation from real world life that you think will fit. It's actually much more sensible rather than coming up with something convoluted. Look at something that that's nice and simple that may have... Uh, a motivation of a person in real life and just port that over into your NPC. Now if you're dealing with a villain then you'll use somebody who has a villainous background maybe a dictator or something like that. There's lots of different characters out there but you'll find that sometimes the easiest way is to keep it nice and simple. Motivation tables for villains and NPCs can also be found in most Game Master guide books uh, or even any kind of role-playing game uh, where there's a, a Game Master guide or a Dungeon Master guide. Not all of them have this, but quite a lot of them do. Now, the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters has a table, which, as I said, has a section on the objectives and motivations of non-player characters. There's 100. I think it goes from pages uh, 239 to 244. And this is actually excellent. Now, it won't always fit into a villain, but it will certainly fit into a NPC. The Game Master's book of non-player characters also has tables around motivation, what they want or need. And so you can pull that information. It's, it is unfortunately scattered throughout that book, but uh, it's still an excellent resource. And then another book that I've mentioned, and that is the Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide on page 94, has a list of non-player character goals. I believe there are 100 different goals or close to that. Maybe not quite as many as that, but there's quite a few. And then even the Dungeon Master Guide for 5e, uh, you'll find that there's a, a couple of pages that have information on how to sort of create a motivation for your NPC, but specifically for a villain in this case. Okay, now that we've done the two really important things, the name and the motivation, you need the non-player character aspects. Now when I say aspects, that's what makes the character that character, okay? The depth of a non-player character is created by giving them a function. Now this might be a function in the story or adventure. It might be an occupation. It might be a role in the entire underlying adventure in some way. So it can be quite broad, but it can also be quite narrow. Personality traits are quite important. You do not need to have more than one personality trait. It's nice if you do. But if you can't portray all of those personality traits, you're kind of wasting your time. So sometimes it's best to stick with one. 
one that sort of one thing that makes them stand out what are their ideals what are their bonds and flaws now you'll be very familiar if you've played 5e you're from hearing this because this is literally taken out of the player's handbook ideals bonds and flaws are really helpful and sometimes you want a secret for your npc okay i actually find that uh using the player's handbook to create my npcs is very very effective now the dnd speak website has a bunch of random tables for selecting or generating up to 100 different personality traits if you want if you're worried about how do i come up with 100 personality traits that's all right because somebody's already done that for you okay and you just go to that website and you just click a button or you just go down look down the list and pick the one that you like um, if you want villainous character traits well they also have 100 different villainous character traits on that website if you want the NPC or non-player character's job, they have a 100 different options. You press a button or select something. And there are a lot of other aspects that you can find on D&D Speak, the website. Uh, that is D&D Speak, the website. This is nothing related to Wizards of the Coast, by the way. The Spontaneous Dungeon Master's Companion on the DM's Guild website also has quite a bit of information on building your own NPCs, specifically about the different aspects of your NPC. Um, again, I'm going to refer you back to the Game, Master, Game Master's book of Random Encounters. It has tables for doing this very thing. Uh, this is more around like secrets and obstacles and other aspects of the um, character, but it's, it's great to have that there. Again, you'll find that the Game Master's book of non-player characters has many random tables that cover secrets and obstacles in quite a bit of detail for you. A very easy way to develop a non-player character and their aspects is by selecting, simply just select a background from the player's handbook for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Something that will fit the NPC that you're trying to create or something that's going to fit the villain that you're trying to create. And then you can roll randomly if you want or quite often I prefer to select the personality traits, ideals, bonds, flaws from the, the table in that, in that player's handbook. It's probably one of the strangest tools uh, and unfortunately it looks like it's going to be cycled out in the future so if you have an older player's handbook for 5e hang on to it because you're probably going to wind up using it as a game master quite a lot that that section there should really be in many respects um something that we find in a dungeon master guide but it's not there <laughs> it's really strange actually you can also roll between one and six rory story cubes and this will assist you in inspiring ideas for your non-player characters um, so each image on the cube or picture will hopefully give you an idea of how to build out what their ideal bond floor, what their motivations are, uh, what secrets they might have, and even what they look like in some respects. I find visual cues very useful. If you don't find a visual cue useful, then maybe you'll use something like listening to music or just pick, uh, not pictures, um, just words, just writing down a series of words randomly. That can quite be um, quite useful as well. The um, the players, no, it's not, something, not the players, the the Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide on page 94 to 99 has a huge list of NPC rewards, secrets, occupations, personality characteristics, and backgrounds. Like even background stuff is there. So if you wanted to do that sort of stuff with your NPC, you can. Um, and it's uh, it's a great resource. I, I, I highly recommend it. Next, what does our NPC or villain look like? And People always fall into a trap, including myself, when it comes to doing this part of it. Your NPC appearance, what does the non-player character look like? It can really help define at surface level what they what they are like. You know, like you, just having a picture makes a big difference, particularly when you can actually put it in front of a player and show them what they look like. But it's often not vital, um, but it is very useful. If you don't have time to find a picture for your non-player character, then just um, create one important physical feature or characteristic that makes them stand out. So we know that this character has an eye patch or a peg leg or a scar or a, a strange tattoo on their arm. Like that is that is the, the key thing. Like if you cannot deal with the, the image side or the picture side, for whatever reason, simply coming up with one important physical feature will help them stand out amongst all your other non-player characters. 
The D&D Speak website has a random table for selecting and generating up to 100 different physical traits for a non-player character. So if you wanted to actually do that part of it and you wanted to have something available to you, this website is completely free. You don't have to pay anything, people. That's why I keep mentioning it. And uh, you can get that appearance sorted out pretty quickly. And you only have to pick one. If you have access to the internet, uh, then you will find hundreds of non-player character portraits on Pinterest and other places like Google Images, DeviantArt, you'll find it on um, ArtStation. But this can also be a trap and suck away all of your time. All your prep time can just disappear. And the reason being is often you don't find a picture that fits the NPC that you have created. If you try to create the NPC first and then try to find a picture to match your NPC that you have created, you have generated a problem because it's quite possible nobody ever drew anything that was what you created in your mind. You're probably better to go backwards with this. If you want to use an NPC image off the internet, start with the image and build the character based off the image. Start with the image and build everything around it. Name the whole lot. And that will solve a lot of your problems and you won't wind up spending hours on the internet trawling through images trying to find the right one. Pathfinder and similar role-playing games have decks of face cards that can also be very helpful. You can buy these things. They are essentially just a, a card, you know, playing card size thing and it has an image or a portrait of a character. It might be humanoid, it might not be, it might be monstrous, it doesn't matter. Um... But again, like any non-player character portrait, it is difficult to find the perfect picture. So if you're going to use face cards or decks or portrait cards in your game as part of your preparation, start with the card and work and work from there. Start with the card, work from there. You could also draw a picture of a non-player character. That might be an option if you feel confident in your drawing skills, but if you don't, then of course that won't be an option. You can also use Midjourney's artificial intelligence or any kind of artificial intelligence drawing software, and that can create NPCs with just a few lines of text, but you get strange things happening. You might wind up with a few extra eyes or fingers. It may not actually draw the image exactly the way that you wanted it to be drawn. So Midjourney also runs into the problem of trying to find an image to match what you wanted. So when it comes to appearance, sometimes the best thing you can do is just write down a few lines of text or one line of text. Okay. Also, surprisingly, and a lot of game masters use this technique, and that is Hero Forge, the, the miniatures customization website where you can make your own miniatures. You can actually build, it takes still takes a lot of time, to, but you can build the NPC from the different elements and options available on Hero Forge. And when you're finished, you do a screen capture and you have an image of your new NPC that you can show to people. <clears throat> this is where you want to be able to control everything. Um, and I will warn you now that building a Hero Forge miniature takes time. And so if you're going to use that for building your NPC image, it's going to take time. So if you don't have time, don't use that technique. <laughs> use a different technique. Okay, we haven't got there yet, but we are. And that is the maths. I know you're going to ask me about mathematics and the, the nature of NPC stat blocks. This is where we go. There is nothing quick about building a non-player character stat block for combat, so don't bother. Just don't bother thinking that you can do that quickly. Uh, if you're going to be building a stat block for an NPC and you want to use it for com combat, you've got a couple of ways of dealing with this. But ultimately, it's not a quick process. Almost all role-playing games have a creature or a monster stat block or a monster book or a creature book with generic stat blocks for commoners and com combat NPCs. And you can use them for your NPCs and your villain without going to a lot of effort trying to create something yourself because it's not a fast process. Uh, the Pathfinder NPC codex is full of pre-made non-player character stat blocks if you're playing that system. And if you look at the Holes House website, that is a, and that is D H O L E, comma S House website, the Dolls House website has a huge library full of Call of Cthulhu non-player characters. So if you needed to build a few non-player characters or you needed something to run in your Call of Cthulhu game, you can with that website. The Dungeon website or Donjon 
D-O-N-J-O-N website has a non-player character generator. It will also create stat blocks for different game systems, not just Dungeons and Dragons. The monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e has a bunch of general st combatant stat blocks for NPCs in the back. The book also includes the commoner, and it's probably the one you're going to be wind up using by far the most. And obviously not for a villain, but there are a whole bunch there that are for a combatant um, stat block. And also too, you could use the Dungeons and Dragons sidekicks, because they're sort of medium dis difficulty or complexity. You'll find that in the in the, uh, the Dungeons and Dragons Essentials Kit or Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And if you want to a more complex stat block for your Dungeons and Dragons 5e game and you don't want to go and buy anything, well, actually, there's a tool that will do that. There's an NPC or non-player character builder. It's The website is RPG Tinker, and it will allow you to build this exactly, well, not exactly, but pretty much what you want fairly quickly without spending too much time fiddling around. Now, whenever I run a program like this, I always like to give some recommendations, some miscellaneous recommendations. So here are my miscellaneous recommendations to you. A combination of all methods and techniques can help when you're struggling to make a non-player character. If you, the more different techniques you use, the more likely you will not get, you're not going to hit a brick wall and get stuck or lost and waste time. So rather than relying on one technique, use many techniques. And I've given you a whole bunch that you can use. If you don't get to use the non-player character this time around, save it for another time. Uh, it is possible that the players will simply kill your non-player character well before you even get a chance to introduce them. Okay, You might have spent a lot of time on this NPC, but it's not a lost, lost investment in time. Because if you never really got to um, provide them with the name of the NPC or a bit about the inf information on the NPC and they said and you said there's a person in the room and they say I attack and kill them and it's already dead well it's actually fine because you can bring them bring that NPC back because you never got a chance to actually present it in the first place so it's not lost so don't feel like players always killing your NPCs is going to be a problem um, the only time it's going to be a problem is when you've done all of that work in game and uh, then they decide after you've introduced them and they know a lot of bit about the NPC, then they decide they're going to kill that NPC. But then again, players do that sort of thing. And you've always got to be aware that it's got to be all right to have that happen at some point. Because if it was not an NPC that you were going to create for them to interact with, you were probably going to be making a monster, were you not? Anyway... <laughs> hopefully this will make you feel uh, a little bit better about the process of losing your NPCs to the murder hobo or the um, the I attack or cast fireball all the time so thank you for listening to me I hope that this was useful to you I want to thank my patrons who support me because without them this program would not continue every single week and uh, all the best and hey till next time keep rolling those 20s Okay, for those of you who know me, I'm not gone. I am still here. And um, today is a work day. And much to my surprise, I did in fact find something we had started but never finished. <clears throat> so I think we should finish it today. Or at least continue working towards completing it and finishing it. So I'm going to go through the chat first. And um, I'm going to have a little um, discussion. And then I will bring us over to our workstation and then we'll go from there because um, there's, a re there's a reason for doing this live. So uh, grab your thinking hats, um, maybe grab a pen, get some food and drink, you know, get comfortable because there's, um, there's a lot to do. And I'm going to share with you what we started with and then we're going to try to complete it today, which is non-player character villainous motivations. So the villain's motivations we need a nice big table of those sorts of things, right? And um, it's kind of already been done, but not quite the way I would like it to be done. So we're going to do that today. And since motivations are so important, we need to do, do, do it for sure. Okay, have you made your own villains? Yes, 75%. Well, that's good news. No, 8%. Well, well, let's see if we can change that. Sometimes 8% just watching. Okay, all right, good to know. 
Talon Victus. What have you got here? Um, so you're going to get grab. Now, which book are you talking about? I'm assuming you're talking about the Game Master's book of non-player characters, um, Talon Victus. If that's the book you're talking about, it's a, it's a very good book. If you if you need NPCs, like it's just it's got so many. But again, like anything, if you want to be able to create your own, it just it still has tables that you can roll on. So there is at least still tools that will assist you in that process. I do not run Pathfinder or D&D. My games are um, Genesis or Dungeon World. Well, that's fine. No, that's, I, I'm as I said, and little people RPGs. Little people, are, that's fine. I, I run this program primarily to be as generic and agnostic as possible. Um, I'm always looking for new resources that I can present to people for different systems. It's just the systems and the things that can be offered are quite difficult, are quite difficult uh, to find because they don't exist sometimes. Like a lot of the smaller systems don't have the, the money and the resources to build the kinds of tools that some of the more popular or bigger role-playing games have access to. You know, they just don't have the money. Um, so I make up so many on the fly. Looking forward to your advice. Okay, good. Well, I'm not going to give you just advice. I'm going to point you in the direction of tools. This is why I do this. Now, Big Kid, hello, Big Kid. Big Kid is a patron, and he's going cough, cough, chat GPT. Now, I've seen chat GPT at work, and I find that chat GPT can do some of the work for you, I find most of the stuff made by ChatGPT to be very stale and boring because it's made by a computer. And uh, um, maybe you've had better, a better. Uh, I just I do not like to promote ChatGPT. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use it. I just don't. I think that takes away a lot of the creativity of that you have that you have to offer. And um, I, I want you to make stuff rather than getting a... Because essentially that computer program software package, that, that chat GPT, is, all it's doing is just taking other people's ideas and literally copy and pasting in many cases. Like it literally copy and paste straight out of Wikipedia, given the opportunity. Because that's how it works. Okay? <laughs> um, yep, I know the one. Okay, good. Uh, Don John, yes. Villains are like um, school baddies with different levels of power or also misunderstood nerds with different levels of power. Make a new villain who is an ear genasi or ear elemental. T-O-R tando, tando? Tando? Hello Fred, how are you doing Fred Hubba? Okay, so one of the things we need to bear in mind and we're not going to get into that so much today in terms of villains because we're going to build villain motivations today is there are a couple of different types of villains. Okay, so... That means the types of motivations that you can have for your villain can be quite broad. So we have the, the nemesis. This is like the, the ultimate big bad. Um, they are kind of like the mastermind. They, they plan all of this out. Like they're the ones at the very, they're the ones that um, send out their troops to deal with the player characters. Like you won't see the nemesis straight away. Quite often the nemesis is in the, in the background, um, far away and well protected by many, many, many forces. But we also have the villain who is kind of like the, what's the, what's the best way to describe this? They are the muscle. So the villain that is the muscle, they are a powerful baddie or villain and they often will work for a, a nemesis or a, a mastermind and they deal with things right up in your face. And the problem with them is they can easily be taken out. Whereas a nemesis, you don't have to worry about the nemesis disappearing from your campaign. Because uh, the nemesis is, is out of reach. Whereas something like the, the muscle, like, you know, the villainous muscle, uh, they can easily be taken out. They could be killed. It's, it's always possible. Players are going to do things. And then there's the, the henchmen or... The, the mercenaries that work for, you know, the the muscle and the, the nemesis. And they, they, they're, they're sort of your, your, your guards, your, your, your main troops. And then there's the cannon fodder, which is, can only be considered the goons. They're kind of like the, they just do what they're told. And they're, they're the weakest of them all. So there's a couple of different types of villains. And so building, building motivations for them 
can be very, very interesting. And so we're going to look at that uh, a lot more broadly very shortly. Uh, and a good place to check out more on that sort of topic is actually um, Guy from um, How to Be a Great um, GM or Game Master. So yeah, he's got a good YouTube channel. Probably doesn't see as much um, traffic as it should though. Uh, Talent Victus. Man, most of this will figure out in and figure out in not too long with AI. Kind of sad. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure they may be able to do that, but I look, the problem is that AI is always going to take the ideas of humans rather than being able to create something completely new. Because it's it's you have to feed it information. And what we're doing is feeding it. Like YouTube, for those of you who don't know, um you could you could look at Google as like this giant, uh, villainous supercomputer, because what Google does is they use YouTube to feed Google. Like YouTube is designed to feed Google to make it smarter, uh, and this is why they allow YouTube to run at a loss, and it has been for some time, is because it is the, it is the guinea pig, for it. So um, if you wanted to have a villain, which was trying to take all the information that the population has and then feed it into a machine, there has to be some way to do that. There you go, a video platform. <laughs> and I'm on it. <laughs> Noroak, hello Noroak. Noroak is a patron. Thank you for being here. I want villains and here I am. Greetings. Well, you're going to get them. Uh, no, what is your prime directive? My prime direct directive is to destroy all humans, of course. And they might eat all the halflings <laughs> with rosemary and garlic, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a villain, I'm just misunderstood, right? That's the that's the next one here. Of course, the halfling must um deep fry and wrap in bacon. <laughs> yeah, like we're going back to AJ's um. Uh, jokes here, bacon, bacon and um, halflings, hero. <laughs> right, I'm going to zip down this chat real fast because we need to get started, don't we? Worp worshippers of pork, <laughs> all the hay, the mighty, mighty pig, bring on the bacon. Uh, here we go. All right, okay, so I think we're almost, at yeah, we're finally at the bottom here. There aren't too many other questions going on here. Okay, so Noroak is sick and tired of us waiting to get this started. This is why he's already put in. So we're going to use a, this is the technique we've used in the past. We do a tag name and then a description, a short description of the motivation of our villain. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do hashtag, hashtag, tag name, uh, followed by, by a... Uh, description of the villain's motivation. Now the reason for doing this is so it's easy to find and so it's easy to organize. It also means we stop duplicating too much information. Now I've already kind of done a lot of this already. I'm just going to be sharing it in a second. That's all. Um, Tell Invictus. The trouble I have is I start games but never get to the um, the BBG before the game never really gets to the to the point. My problem problem. No, so so what you do is you use different types of villains. You have a nemesis out of reach, and then you have different villains that will come along that fulfil different purposes. How's it going, Sir Rill Nil Mill? How's it going, Sir Sir Rill? I'm going to say Sir Rill. It's going to be a lot easier for me. Anyway, anyway. What's the per what's the perf I don't know you tell me what is the perfect bacon is there a perfect bacon I've never heard of it <laughs> anyway anyway I'm just going to close up a couple of things here so that we are in the right place and got the right information in front of me um, I'm going to drop in a couple of ideas here that we've already got uh, I've already got about 32 possibly more ready to go and I'm going to share the screen with you in a second uh, so let's just find that where is it web yes window share let's do the window share window share okay all right so is it big enough my head's not in the way 
should be fine transition over okay so before you you see what we started doing but there's no tag names for this so tag names are useful we, by using a tag name it helps us identify what it is but it not only does it help us identify what it is it helps us organize it to make sure we're not duplicating ourselves. because if we're going to do 100 non-player character villain motivations and goals well that's a lot right and so it's quite easy that we wind up duplicating that stuff along the way now I have another document that I can help shape this in some way. So I'm going to grab my phone. Now, where is it? Okay. <clears throat> so we've probably got about 70 more that we need to create. Of which, <laughs> of which um, some I can pull it over from a different document that will be, um, be appropriate. Not all of them, unfortunately, but some of them. Anyway, let's just see what we've got here. No, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. I want to close this, get this, go over here, press this button. Pardon me. And okay, there we go. I can see the chat. My chat is catching up. My phone is a little bit slow. And okay. So we're probably going to wind up doing, I'm going to, I'm going to, when I port stuff over, I might change screens over just to make it so it doesn't get too messy. Okay. <clears throat> so I drink water and then we'll get started. I'm going to make this list of course available to patrons on Patreon. For those of you who want it. <clears throat> Um, what's this? Uh, Kunek, the romancer, surreal, is to cause fights between married couples by <clears throat> leaving hickeys on spouses' necks, whereupon the Cambion feeds off the disputed couple, the more noble or artistic. I am lost. What are you going on about? <laughs> uh okay all right all right let's let's give you an example of this so you can see how what we're trying to do here so for example norok has provided one reconstructor this is the tag name he selected and what it is is the following um the villain seeks to break down organic entities and reform them in order to create new life forms so reconstructor so it makes sense the tag name and this is what they're trying to do okay we can shorten this if we wanted to but it's probably no point right now um right now i want you to think pinky in the brain there's a reason why i wrote down this this statement but it was so long ago i've kind of forgotten what the reason was okay so reconstructor so we've got a whole bunch here i'm going to read them out to you i'm going to Put some tag names to this but as it happens we also as i said we did a monster motivations um 100 monster motivations so it took us ages to do but we got there but some of them will be quite useful for porting over for a villain okay he had too much wine my villain's motivation is to get people addicted to pixie dust and overdose themselves into a Undead army. <laughs> okay. So really what we want to put down here is the... I'm going to put this into alphabetical order too, by the way. So this is a... Um, so do we want to call it drug dealer or drug baron? Let's call it drug baron. Drug Baron. The villain wants to get everyone addicted to a type of drug. Uh, 
um, drug drug that controls them okay type of drug so I'm in the control side what is this type of drug let's just go with that there you go drug baron you wanted it it's there uh, so tell him Victus no this this particular document is not f currently available because I've not finished it it's supposed to be 100 and we've got less than 100 we've only got 34 it will be available on patreon but this document here which you see before you is 100 monster motivations and we're going to port some of these over to our villain motivation table not all of them because they don't always apply but this one is complete it is 100 monster motivations uh, it took us a long time to create this this is up on patreon i made it available to patrons along with a couple of other uh, quite large tables for building your own monster stuff so i'm going to go through this list as you guys are chatting chucking in your ideas and uh okay now let's go back to here because i believe uh 28 transform into a god and noroak has already gone with 28 i think that's number 28 ascension the transform into a higher powered one right let's do that um blood bolded so tag names for things that you see before you i i'm I'm going to just get rid of that 30 there and I won't do anything too fancy here so I don't mess it up so you can see what the numbers are and if you come up with an interesting tag name for something you can see on the screen let me know uh, so ascension I think that's a good idea so um, let's go uh, the villain is trying is trying to transform into a god or um, higher power okay so ascension and so we'll take I won't move it around just yet because that'll just throw everything out and I don't want to do that just yet do I have d35 I don't have d35 unfortunately pharmaceutical corporation CEO <laughs> okay so you see you see what I mean right you see what we're trying to do here so 30 I believe you have put down blood bonded trying to prevent the death of a family member or loved one so this is one of our villains motivations we're going to put down this one um, blood bonded those are look those are all good um, tag names Sam um, Norok you're doing a really good job I'll tell you that now very impressed very impressed uh, let's um let's see if we can't 28 uh, unknowingly eats a mushroom or something I'm not sure I quite understand what you were trying to say there <laughs> okay so let's have a look at some of these um, being promoted to a position of power that they desire desire so that's their motivation um, ambition let's let's just call it ambition let's just call it what it is ambition ambition it doesn't necessarily sound like a bad thing okay but it can be the villain wants to be promoted to a position of power that they desire it's a very basic one so ambition so we'll put that in Oh, the God's realm. I see. I see. I see where you're going with that. So I think we've got I got that, that one sorted out. Let's see the next one. Become the pirate king of all seas and oceans. Now, what would be a good tag name for wanting to become a pirate king? I'm getting rid of the hat. It doesn't help me. 
Nine, kill the poor. <laughs> All right, so somebody else has done it. All right, okay, big kid. I saw your comment. Like uh, Somebody else has sorted it out, so that's fine. Okay, so number nine, eradicate all the homeless. Um, kill the poor. Uh, let's let's see. Is is there an? Is that really? It's a, it's quite a long tag name. <laughs> Usually we use one word or we use two words, and we have three words there. King of the seas. How about Noroak? We shorten that and go sea king. Let's go sea king. Seeking. The villain seeks to become the pirate king of all the seas and oceans. I think that will do nicely. So, yeah. Um, make eating the poor selfish. A modest what? A modest proposal. Okay, so now. Kill the poor for number mm. it's a dead kennedy song oh okay ah oh, i missed that one didn't get that one completely um eradicating all the poor is not really genocide is it so the word genocide is not gonna maybe we can just do a um Let's do eradicate all the poor, which is a terrible concept, but let's do this and let's go define because this has helped us a few times. <laughs> Number three would be animator. Interesting. Okay. Um, so let's go back to what Noroak has put in. He's put animator for number three. Create an an army of undead through necromancy. I think animator is a good idea. Let's do that. Number three, animator. Animator. Villain is creating an army of undead through necromancy. Pretty, pretty standard sort of way of going. Um, Reanimator. You want to say animator and reanimator. Actually, big kid, let's go reanimator. I like it. Reanimator. Okay, so we've got that down. I'm going to reorganize these into alphabetical later. Okay, people, let's just work our way through this list to get these done. And then I'm going to do a bit of cheating. We're going to port a lot of stuff that we've already done over on the other one back over to here. Uh, number four. Heretical purge. Yeah. Oh, what's the... Um, Maybe we can use the word inquisitor, inquisitor. Is it inquisitor? Heretical purge is not a bad idea, Nora. I'm going, I'm considering it, but I wonder if we define inquisitor. Inquisitor. What is an inquisitor? A person making an inquiry, especially one seen to be excessive, harsh, or searching. So maybe we can go No, it's destroy, it's purge. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think the the name that you've selected is actually a very good idea. Reticle purge. Um Uh, 
Okay, so that's um, the heretical purge, a villain is destroying a specific religion. Got it. Number five, destroy a nation, religion, or the world. Now, you've gone conqueror, and I believe that's probably spot on. So conqueror for number five. Conqueror. Destroy a nation, religion, or the world. Uh, good. Nice one. Okay, so I'm going to keep scrolling along so you can see some of these things. As something might pop into your brain. Uh, Tell Invictus. Magnus Evictus. Magnus Evictus is number six, you reckon. Uh, destroy the existence of magic. Now, Magnus Evictus. Interesting. The D-Weaver. Big kid. All right, so given Inquisitorial Purge as in Warhammer, it's kind of where my head was going in, in there. Inquisitorial Purge. <sighs> okay, so... I may have actually just taken this off on a, a tangent that was not really useful. So let's type this word in here and define this and see what Google tells us. Great Purge. The term Purge is Soviet Union slang, the abbreviation. Da, da, da. So let's heretical. Plagues. But what does heretical really mean? Is it giving us the believing in or practicing religious heresy? No, I think I think you you're right the first time. I think your first instinct on that Noroak was spot on, and actually I just com complicated the whole process by saying inquisitor. Um, Bathroy, Bathroy, number seven, Bathroy. Ah, oh, right, okay. Let's let's we'll, we'll get there. I'm just. Just working my way through here. Cloner needs test subjects to try and make it work. Too many failed attempts to create monstrosities. Oh, you're create, trying to create a, a new one, aren't you? I see, I see. Um, well, I don't know if we had something like that, but Cloner, it's a good, it's a good tag name. Cloner, um, the villain. Um, is replicating the population. Uh, what is it? Okay, so I need to just switch this down here a bit. Okay, clone up. The villain is replicating the population and makes monstrosities. Okay. Sweet. It's in there, Fred. Right, let me just go back to where we were working at, where we were working over here. And um, I was trying to decide on what, what I wanted to do with this suggestion. Magnus Evictus. Evictus. Magnus Evictus. What does that really mean? Well, doesn't really Evictus Magnus. Define Magnus. Member of a priestly um, caste or ancient per of ancient Magnus. Okay, I see. Word meaning of Magnus. From ancient Greek, magician, Magnus. Okay, and then Evictus. Evictus is probably still going to work, work quite well. So let's go e Evictus. Evictus. Define Evictus. Is it? It's, it's probably not a real word. That's the problem, right? Evictus. Translation, examples, vocabulary, evictus. Okay, so that's not going to help me. 
let's just go here okay I'm not too sure I'm not I'm not sold on the idea I'm just not too sure that it's gonna work so I'm, I'm gonna think about that a little bit more okay um, next have their own idea and ask questions but already have an answer inquisitors how how's so what are we trying to do there I'm a little lost um, Talon Victus um, I'm a little bit lost I see you've got a tag name you've got an idea going behind it but I'm not sure what to do with it that's that's my biggest problem right now so um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to my face for a second I'm going to port your idea into the, what will I call it, the, the question mark area. And then see if I can sort of decipher it a bit more. Um, but right now I'm just going to go with, let's deal with tag names for what we already have there. Because we have a bunch of ideas already. And I want to just finish these off. Because we did spend some time making them, so it would be good to have tag names for them now. Uh, all right, so, and then back to where I need to be, which is over here. Okay, all right. D Weaver was number six. Um, D Weaver. Did somebody else have number six or something else? Magnus, D Weaver. Well, D Weaver, I guess you could go Magnus, D Weaver. Diva. Um, D Weaver Magnus. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, big kid. Bathroy. What's a Bathroy? You got here number seven. Draining the blood of children to make a potion of everlasting life. What well, is a horrible like, concept? I I I realize people, but let's let's see. What would that be? Bath Bathroy. What is a Bathroy? What is the meaning of Bathroy? Uh jeez. Oh, an alleged serial killer. Is it based off her? From the family of Bathroy, who owned land in the kingdom of Hungary, Bathroy and four of her servants were accused of torturing and killing hundreds of girls and women between 1590 and 1610. Bathroy. The name Bathroy is a Petra, Petra, is a surname that comes from the Welsh person name, Anthea, the original surname is da 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 da. Um, okay, so I see where you're doing what you're doing with this. What are the air origins? Um, variant long ago went to powerful family of Hungary. Da da da. Bathroy. Um, it's it. I guess it's um. Yeah, I don't know. Bathroy. I'm still going to think about that one a bit too as well. Um, I changed my mind. Number five, um, Annihilator sounds more um, accurate. Conqueror tends to want to rule and not destroy. Ah, I see. No, no, no. Fair enough. No, I get that. You're you're probably right. Conqueror is 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 slightly. Whereas this is Annihilator. That's a better a better um, word to use. Annihilator. Annihilator. Yes, I agree. Let's do that. Magnus. Magnus. Um, slaver. The victim... The, what? Slaver? The, the villain seeks to torture other beings and use them as slaves. Well, I wonder if we don't already have that here. Um, and I'm all for let's have something about slavery because we want we want our player characters to fight slavery for sure. But do we have slaver already? No, we don't. I'm just looking at the monster list here. Okay. Well, I'm going to chuck it over here for now. And we'll, we'll port that over. All right. <laughs> I was thinking, I was looking at it. Has he... Has he based it off um, Talon Victus, the name that he's got? <laughs> I was like, ah, I see him. Slaver. The villain 
seeks to capture other beings and use them as slaves. Slave labor. All right, that's that one done. Okay, I'm going to have a drink of water. I'm kept trying to catch up on my chat. I see I didn't, I'm falling behind a bit. Great vanishing. <laughs> okay, so where are we up to? We, we're, we're kind of, I'm still a little unsure what to do with six and seven, but we can move on to other things. So establishing a crime syndicate or, or mafia. Well, that's probably crime boss, isn't it? Or crime lord. Crime syndicate or mafia. Let's just call that crime lord. Um, I can't think of anything else. If somebody comes up with a better name. Okay. Great Vanishing. Magnus Evictus. Great Vanishing, I think. All right. Inquisitor, the villain, seeks to uncover plots against the order. They serve and see those responsible, dis responsible destroyed. Inquisitor. Okay, so I see. So you've taken that idea, that, that tag name, and you've turned it into a... Okay, so you want me to replace this with the previous one, correct? Or was that already, because that, that's sort of something that had already been put forward by Talon. Uh, Inquisitor have their own idea and ask questions. Um, okay, all right. Interesting. New Zealander. You, you would have marked it down as New Zealander. Costa Nost Nostris. Costa Nostris, really? Caffeine converter. Oh, God. Ah, I can see this is going to be interesting. All right, so this is this is what I'm going to suggest. That you, you've seen a lot of the stuff we've got here. I need to take a short break. I will come back to this. Um, and, of course, if we don't get it done in two months, we'll, we'll return and we'll complete it or we'll try to complete it. Um, but yes, I, I, I'm finding myself now getting a little distracted by the, uh, the chat. <laughs> I'm not trying to figure out what you're saying here. Yeah, I was like, I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, I just Googling and I, yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't know Latin, so it's not. So selling weapons of war for profit. Um... Well, what would that be? That's like arms dealer. It's really just an arms dealer, isn't it? An arms dealer. Or, it, I mean, the tag name itself needs to be fairly simple to understand. So let's, let's just go arms dealer. That's our tag name for selling the villain. Sells weapons of war for profit. Um, okay. Rule or dominate the world. That is conqueror. Ah, uh, me villain. Okay. So uh, I've I've chucked a few in here. So I'm going to take a, a quick break, and I'm like, so go get a drink of water, go go use the toilet, have a piss, whatever you need to do, and uh, mind. So 31, mind shackler. What's mind shackler? 31, turning everyone into a slave through mind control. Mind shackler.
Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I'll go with that. No, no, no. You don't have to apologise, um, Talon Victus. This just happens to me sometimes. It's like, there's a few people who've been with me for a while on the live streams, and so they know how I think, so they've got a fairly good idea of what I'm likely to say yes to or no to. Or whether I, sometimes I just struggle to figure out how to incorporate it. Um... Because it should be obvious by now, I don't just write down everything. If I do that, there's a, there's a few people in my chat who know me very well, often my patrons, and they will write in stuff that is um, quite naughty, and so I then have to go and cull it out later on. Um, it's, a, it's a joke. It's an ongoing joke. So I have to be very careful about when I read stuff and where I put it in, so you don't have to apologize as well. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm digging in, talent. <laughs> yeah, big kid will be digging in. <laughs> God help me when you become a moderator, dude. Um, <laughs> God help me. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to let Arnold Schwarzenegger look after you for a while while I go take um, a leak. Come back. We'll work through this. And then, um, yeah, I believe we'll be doing pretty well by the time we've finished here. It, uh, it'll look a lot better than it was before. So keep thinking. Twisted Transformation, number 29. Oh, okay. I'm coming back in here. Oh, hopefully you guys haven't got too crazy out there. Yeah, get some wine. That's the way. All right. I'm getting comfortable. Lining myself up. Let's have a look at what you guys have been up to. We're back. All right. Let's have a look. So I believe before I left, um, Noroak had dropped in. I, I think I've got an idea how to solve the destroying the existence of magic. I think the word Magnus is a good idea. But we just need something else. Magnus, something here. Magnus, Magnus, Magnus. Um, where did I see this? Do, 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 do. It's mag as an M A mag. Magnus. All right. Magnus people will be able to deal with, so that's fine. Now twenty nine. Transform the world into a twisted nightmare. This is what um Norak was going on about. Twisted transform transformation. Trans tran twisted transformer. Let's do that. Twisted transformer. 
and I, I'm not referring to um, the Decepticons or anything like that. Okay, people. Uh, the villain. Seeks. Seeks to transform. Okay, so that's a pretty wacky, sicky one. Uh, what else? I'm definitely crossing the line with the caffeine one. Uh, this is my scariest idea yet. E.T. Base. Hello, E.T. One of my favorite movies is the E.T. movie. So welcome, E.T. Base. Paver of um, good intentions. Good Lord, that is a bit of a mouthful. We're going to have to condense that down a bit. Uh, this one seeks to eliminate all evil intentions. Unfortunately, f um, will free will is lost. <laughs> Uh, okay, I see where you go with that. Uh dear. Um well hmm. Paver of good intentions. Yeah, there's no way I'm putting a tag name that long down. It isn't gonna happen. It's just, it's too much. <laughs> it's funny. It's definitely funny, but it's it's definitely too much. <laughs> God. Um Cafe Converter, the villain seeks to consume all the caffeine in the world. Oh, you've got to be kidding. I knew this was going to happen eventually. I knew you were going to do this. All right, that's it. I'm uh, I'm switching over. Just to give you an example of the things that I have to contend with sometimes, people. This is this <laughs> this is this is this is how, what my patrons do. And, and Noroak is not the only one. <laughs> um there is a big question mark on your idea there. You you know this is going to happen, right? Caffeine converter. Jeez. All right, here we go. What this means is, this is a signal to me, Fred, you're moving too slow. Please speed up and get the job done. This is usually what they are trying to do. <laughs> Ah uh, dear, and then what was the other one? Yes, okay. So we'll 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 go a little bit higher up, and I will cut out this section, and we will modify the Inquisitor a little bit more. You can't see what I'm doing because I'm hiding it, people. I will bring it back in a second, uh, but yeah, right now I am hiding quite deliberately. Anyway, there we go. Sweet. Now. We'll switch on back over. There we go. How's that? A little bit better. Wisher. The villain seeks to sacrifice something significant in order to gain wishes. Okay. It, so, three question marks by side something indicates there's a good chance it will not survive the culling. <laughs> anyway let's have a look what have you got here wisher uh the villain seeks to sacrifice something significant in order To gain, wish. Ah, oh, I can't believe I didn't see that one coming. Ah, oh, Noroak. Oh, it's Thanos, isn't it? It's Thanos in that sodding gauntlet. I didn't even spot it. I didn't even spot what you had done there. <laughs> okay, all right. I get it. Well, it's not like you know, I suppose I can't. I can't get rid of it, can I? Because it's pretty legit. Um, but now, now I see how I got suckered. That that was that was very funny. I'm not going to say it's a bad idea. That's your joke for the night. I felt like you. I think I, you. you I, I didn't even spot the when you wrote it in. I didn't even. I didn't even claw it. Oh, that's Thanos. Yeah. Well, well done, um, Zookeeper. I guess if anybody's a villain, they're not Thanos's. Um, wants to 
mate pairs of every species y species from a single from a single uh, okay so why is why is that e so remember villain motivations whatever they're trying to do has to be evil so why is it evil wants to make pairs of every species from a single one to a well I don't need that bit but why what why what makes this villainous why is this a villainous thing to do that's the that's the thing Remember, we need to stay on the focus that the, whatever the villain is doing, whatever the reason it is, it's got to be a motivation that is that it's villainous, that is evil in some way. Okay, villains are evil. Whatever they're trying to do is evil in some way, and it's just twisted in some villain evil acts and motivation for villains. This is sod it. You gotta be kidding me. Stop do oh, there we go. Hashtag it. Let's get this let's get this in the right direction. Alright. <laughs> zookeeper. Why am I doing zookeeper? I don't know. Yeah. So I'm I'm doing a big question mark on the zookeeper idea. I I don't really understand what we were doing with this here yet. You have to explain more. Betrayer. Seeking revenge against former allies by betraying them and causing their downfall big kid if we don't have that we probably should so yes let's put it in um again i am <laughs> this is going to cause so many too much trouble when i have to organize everything uh but anyway change mate to collects really betrayer so betrayer is um, villain seeks revenge. Uh, what do you call here? Revenge against former allies so that's it mm. oh did you <laughs> no, okay. it wasn't that at all well I spotted it and I was thinking ah oh, okay um, so let's see it so this is this is interesting I, I'm just trying to figure out villain seeks revenge against former allies because of a, a grievance I think that's probably about where it needs to be zookeeper 40 zookeeper involves capturing beings against their will sounds evil to me though um, I would name it Collector instead. Collector. Um, I don't feel like, oh, well, you know, I'll call it Collector rather than Zookeeper. That's fine, but I'm still not entirely sure what it is that we are considering as, as evil. Because if that were the case, then all zoos in the world would be classified as evil. Do we consider all zoos and reserve parks as evil? Uh just a question there, like putting it out there. Uh, that <laughs> the villain impersonates a heavy personage. Uh, they say all the gods are demons and their critics are unknown <laughs> demon worshippers. I am I am lost. I am lost as what to do to that. Can I see your gambler guy? A guy again. Huh? Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Right. So,
Okay, hang on. It's not necessarily evil, just undesired uh, by his collected pairs of creatures. Thinking of Star Trek Menagerie, pilot with the with Kirk, the keepers were intended to be um, good, but they denied freedom. Ah, okay. Collected. The villain wants to uh, wants to make pairs of every sp um, every species. by trapping them in cages and that's that's probably what that's that makes a bit more sense now i get it fred i'm i'm on board yeah, an environmentalist <laughs> um the gilded cage is still a cage yes it is yes no freedom A scroll up. All you mean is scroll up. I'm trying to scroll up. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. I haven't seen that, so don't give away anything about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, people. <laughs> I, I really want to see that movie. <laughs> um, Hunter Murphy Law. Hello, Hunter Murphy, uh, Murphy Law. Blimey. I'm making a villain tonight after our game. I appreciate your thoughts last night. They helped me. Bring new friends and family in a good way. Well, that's I'm great. I'm so glad to hear that. If I if if what I did worked, because sometimes advice does not work. Every every group is different. People are different. It doesn't always work. But if it did work and you had a good time and it and it's 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 going well, that's excellent. Okay, the villain seeks to undercover uncover plots against the order they serve and see the those responsible destroyed and that is probably an inquisitor let's let's do that yeah i think that's right so let's leave that as it is um i'm not american but i'm not british either so so uh yeah keep throwing your ideas out i'll keep up Scrolling up, yes, yeah, sorry people, you mean scroll up on my page so you can see what's going on, I'm sorry. So you can see and put the tag names, I, now I understand. I'm a bit bit behind here, um, um, Talon, bit behind. So let's, let's see if we can't, I think I've got a, a solution to dealing with the Evictus idea that you've got here. So Evictus... And let's go in here and do uh, Theosaurus. Oh, Theosaurus. Or... Oh, there. Victus. Virus. Victus. One page. That doesn't help me. Uh, Victus. Let's just put the word destroy. Destroy. Destroyer. Normally I get a better sort of rundown. I just get like a list of like bomber, annihilator, cancer, chemotherapy. No. What's another word for destroyer? Ruiner, waster, uprooter, undoer. Uh, yeah, okay, all right, so, yes, sorry about that. I am, yeah, Spellweaver, unleash ancient magic lost through time to dominate the current world. Okay, yeah, I, I'll go with that. Reverse, the villain seeks to reverse the laws of nature. Oh, you've got to be kidding, people. All right, fine, we'll put him in. It's pretty scary, but we'll put him in. Uh... <laughs> So I'm going to come back to these ideas in a second. So I won't, I won't disappear, for, but I'm, I'm just not going to do the, the funny jumping back and forth and copy and pasting thing. I just want to get it, get these ideas in quickly before I lose track. And um, God, I haven't even had time to, to um, chuck anything from the other documents into here. It's been a... It's been a fast process, I have to say. Um, should shouldn't be surprised though, should I? Unleash ancient magic through um, through time to dominate the current world. 
that's that one. And then the other one that is, this was uh, Big Kids, I've got your idea, mate. Reverse, reverse nature. Good Lord. Fanatic. Oh, good Lord. Here, here. I'm going to have to be much, much faster. I've either got to learn to type or I've got to get a typist. The villain seeks to reverse the laws of nature. What a crazy idea. Uh, and it's a great idea. Fanatic. Uh, Merrick Killer. <laughs> the iRobot AI. AI is the tag. A wants to protect its species from... I see, I see. I think I've got something about AI here already, as it happens, because you guys insisted that we, we have AI at some point and in, in, tied in here. Um, the villain seeks to sacrifice others to the monster or monsters or gods it serves. Fanatic. Okay, so um, Fanatic. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in another word here. Sack. Reficing fanatic. I think that's probably where it needs to be. So, yep. Okay, back to the back to the uh, the, the page. Sorry, people. There we go. That's in. Um, how are we doing? Shouldn't we start with the number? Yeah. No, that's what I want to do. Is I wanna I wanna just fill in the tag numbers first. Which is, but but this is what happens to me. I'm telling Evictus. So I have a lot of people who have lots of ideas, and when they get ideas, they just they put them out, which is fine. So I wind up writing them down. Um, but yes, I should be going through this and trying to figure out what to tag them with, and I'll get there. The creative process is a is a, a chaotic process sometimes. It's not always clean and tidy. <laughs> um. Okay, I got the idea from a book. The evil character get to be heroes for a change, not to mention all the ironic jokes the uh, players can spin. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that's true. All right, so let's have a look here, and let's, just, let's get these tag names in. Um, eat all the members of a specific species or race. Um, let's, let's cannibalistic. Cannibalistic something. Cannibalistic. Well, oh, let's just go cannibal. It's, it's not really cannibalistic, is it? What's the deal? What would you call that? It's actually probably not quite that. How about Crusader as a title? Crusader. Um, which one are we talking about with regard to Crusader? What does Crusader uh, apply to? Because I'm not sure what the, what it's, it's going to apply to. I'm looking. I'm just not seeing it. So I'm not too sure what to do with the Crusader. Very, very messy. Yes, very messy. Okay, so cr cannibalistic. I'm not too sure if I like that. So I'm going to put a little question mark beside it for now. So we'll come back to this. Uh, drain the blood of children to make a potion of ever, um, everlasting life. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yes, yeah, not too sure. Eradicate all the homeless. Haven't figured out anything to do with that. Felix Textus, not sure, but you, but you gambler. So which number does it apply to? That's what I'm trying to see. Okay, experimenting on animals and humanoids to create the perfect being. Um, do you know, I think that, we're going to just call that Frankenstein. Is that not Frankenstein? <laughs> There's no stopping nor oak, by the way, people. Uh, Fran can <laughs> I always love the fact that Noroak is in here. I'm so lucky. 
the number of times he's bailed me out has been immense. Um, Ego Frankenstein. Um, experiments. Experiments on animals and humanoids to create the perfect being. Um, but uh, breaches moral codes. Really, that's what it all is all about. It's like the moral code, right? Uh, so that's fine. Para Parasiticologists to infect the populace with a parasite in order to better study them. Oh my! Sounds like every government in the under the sun right now, doesn't it? Let's uh, let's put it in though. I agree. So let's uh, let's just do another switchy over. So you have to put up with my face, people, for a second while I just grab his, his comment. So it's probably just on him. Good old field research. <laughs> Mad Hatter wants to possess all hats. Okay, Fred, we'll add that in. I know you've done that for me. Thank you. <laughs> this is what I talk about. The villain seeks to infect a pop populace with um, parasites in order to better study them. So that's pretty sick. Um, and then we have the, the jestful one. Uh, let's do this one here. Rebel, number 17. Okay, Rebel, thank you. I will do that in a second. Uh, Mad Hatter. Okay. The villain... Once, once to possess, <laughs> possess all the hats in the world. The Mad Hatter. I'm not even wearing a hat right now, and I uh, I know exactly what that joke is uh, is there for. It's for me. I realise I I spotted it. <laughs> okay, Fred. Here we go. Um, Stein and Frank. What's this? Tybor Eschkurt. Eschkurt. Tybor Eschkurt. Hello, Tybor Eschkurt. Was one of my villains um, vigilantes. I oh, was it. So seventeen. So you said seventeen was. Let's go back to seventeen. Let's try to rename these things. Shall we? We've been trying to get this done. So overthrow the government with a with a co. I don't know, oh, with a, with a co, so hang on, so rebel, um, government with a company, I think that's with a, with a corporation, corporation, or business company. Okay, I think that's what that was supposed to be. So rebel. Is that really rebel? It's 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 probably not. I think this is something else. Um That's that's actually probably something else, isn't it? I've I've kind of worded that, and it doesn't look right. Overthrow the government with a something something. Oh, it has to be something else that it goes in here. This this can't work. This does sort of beg the question of another idea, doesn't it? Though. Um, mimic merchant. Oh, good lord! I, I'm not. I'm not keeping up with them. Um, overthrow the government with a. What would you call it? Coalition. Coalition. 
coalition, coalition, co, uh, coalition, corporation or or business company. I think that's what that would be. Hello, Derry. How are you? Is a good guy in e in in a evil land count as as a villain? I don't think that. No, that doesn't. We're not. I'm not using that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably going to work out better. Rebel suggests something else. Super. Um, let us just let's just see if I can get this here. I just want to make sure that we're using words that are actually going to work for people, so that it's not it's pretty clear what the heck is going on. Um, because when you're doing something like this, it's very easy to wind up creating words that don't exist. A person who takes a position of power or importance illegally or by force. So that's perfect. That's perfect. Well done. Nice job. Mimic merchant. The merchant, the villain, sells mimics disguised as objects to unsuspecting buyers, then claims them with the buyers go missing. Oh my gosh, really? Really? Corporatist. Um, now is there such a word as corporatist? I think the word that... Uh, Noroka suggested is probably the right word. Corporist. Corporate. Corporatist. Corporatist. Is corporatist a, a real word? Corporism? No, it's not really. I think we're going to go with the other one. Tax collector. Good lord. So we've got the, the mimic merchant. We've got tax collector. The infamous corporate. <laughs> we have Inquisitor already there. Uh, we actually have a whole lot we haven't named. Again, we'll get there, but um, no time soon. Right, so I'm going to jump over. I'm going to chuck in some of these ideas that you guys have come up with. So Mimic Merchant's actually not bad. Let's get that. Um... This is going to be an unholy mess to deal with later on. The villain cells are missing. Okay. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. Now, what was the tax collector? Yes, if anything can't like if anything isn't. <laughs> I guess the, the concept of the tax collector, if you look at like the story of Robin Hood and a lot of people's view of taxation, um, tax collectors would be evil, would they not? <laughs> um, who steals the collected money and collects repeatedly so they can turn into a into the uh, turn in the correct amount. There's a lot going on there, Fred. I've got it down, but there's a lot going on there. No, 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 no. I, I, I just, yeah, I've, I'm just trying to make sure Candyman literally turns victims into all-day suckers. Oh, good Lord. Here we go. <laughs> all right. So it's starting to devolve. I can see this now. It's starting to devolve. I'm putting a question mark beside that one, um, but I've written it down. Okay, so let's let's go back to this camera so you can see what I've put on here. Uh, all right, so back to where we were trying to work out some of the tag names for these things. We haven't got. We, I mean, we've we've done all right. Okay, a wager to corrupt holy or good people. Now, what is that? Is there a word that would work for that? 
a wager. So a villain who has a wager to corrupt holy or evil people. That is a different sort of thing. Yeah, so I haven't changed the numbers. I haven't moved anything around. I haven't put it into order. So if you see a number that sort of sticks out and you like an idea and you come up with an idea for it, let's go with that. Um, I don't know what to do with that one yet, so we'll leave that for now. Summons demons, devils, and eldritch horrors into the world to research. What would that be? What would you call that as a tag name? That's interesting. Steals from the rich to give to the poor. Um, well, that's the Robin Hood. Um, that's the that's the Robin Hood thing going on there. I suppose we would still we can still potentially have it. Can we not? Twenty five, embezzler. Twenty five is embezzler. Twenty five, stealing from the kingdom or nation's coffers for personal gain. Perfect, Fred. Nice job. Love it. Good, good, good. That's very, very clear what it is. Embezzler. Which is not how you spell it, apparently. Okay, embezzler. Okay, there we go. So we've got embezzler. So let's uh, scroll on down here a little bit more. Have a look more, a few more of these little suckers. Um, I'll live off the kingdom. Um, what is it? Okay, so what have we got here? Arms dealer seeking a magical legendary item. It's hmm. horrific summoner. Twenty-seven, you reckon? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, Derry, I think that's a good idea. Just not spelling it incorrectly would be helpful though. Here we go. I got it now. Couldn't quite get it out. Um, summons demons, devils, and ultra horrors into the world to research. So that's that one. Grifter. You reckon 16 is Grifter? Living off the... Oh, is, is, that, is that the definition of a Grifter? Um... Grifter. What's a grifter? A person who engages in petty or small-scale swindling. Is that what it is? Lives off, off the kingdom or nation at its expense. Grifter. Interesting. Interesting. Um, okay. Grifter, living off there. Lives off. Okay, so, okay, Grifter. All right, okay, I'll give you that. That seems redistributor. So that was number 26 that you had said. Redistributor. Research or gather. 27. Um, summon research. Horrifics researcher. Let's just go. Actually, I'm going to, I think, well, instead of summon, I'm going to go with, so I'm going to go with what you suggested, Derry, with horrific, but I'm going to use Talon's Let's go with researcher because that makes more sense. Let's do that. Horrific researcher. There we go. 16. Uh, grifters do survive off of other extra. Okay. Financial parasite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Grifter, financial parasite. I, I'd go with any any one of those. That seems about right. Seek to control all magic in the world. Well, okay. So what is that? That's an interesting. What do we call that one? Hmm. 
um, operate an underground guild crime syndicate or mafia. I, I did not already have something like that. I'm sure I had something like crime lord in here. Crime, establish a yeah. So there we go. There, this is why we do it this way. It's to ensure that we we don't have double ups and we just have a double up already. So we're going to go cut. And I will move this over to here. Well, no, I don't consider welfare recipient an evil action. Remember, people, I'm not from North America. I'm in New Zealand, and we are a um, socialist society here. So, and I believe in having a socialist society. I am I'm not all about it should all be down to capitalism because capitalism isn't going to look after people the capitalism will just yeah <laughs> it just makes money that's all it does um establish a crime syndicate or mafia oper uh, operate an underground guild so I think we can do this we can just trim this a little bit and I'll go here we know what the concept of mafia is, or operate an underground guilt. So I think crime lord is established. That's that's fine. Twenty two is sort of like collector, is it? Is twenty two like collector? Let's have a look. Yeah, but it's 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 um it's a it's a different type of collector, isn't it? So it's sort. Of... I know. I think you've. Artifact collector. Not not brilliant. Artifact. Artifact collector. Let's let's put that down. Charity gone a wire. <laughs> right. All right. Heist. Oh, 23. Somebody said 23. Nora, what is that? 23. What is 23? Heist. Why heist 23? Rather than arms dealer, you want to say, you want me to put heist. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, I'm running out of time and I need to be going to work. So let's have a look at what we've done so far. We haven't tag named everything. Still working on 100 villain motivations. We've got a few here that still need to be have, have tag names on them. Some that will probably need to be trimmed a little bit. Some that I probably will dump. There are 48 of them, and then when I get a chance, I will port over some of the monster motivations over to the villain motivations one, but only the ones that sort of stand out as being sort of what, we, what we're what we after, uh, because not all of them are going to, going to uh, make sense. Some of them will be more suitable for a monster than they are for, like, your, your big bad villain, so... Um, so bloodlust, let's. Look, I'm going to pull bloodlust over. And the reason being is that's our vampire, isn't it? Copy. <clears throat> let's put bloodlust in there right now because it's going to come up eventually. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. So we we can this little this this table will get done, people. It will get done. It's not going to be a problem. Magic killer. Uh, Magnus exterminus. 14 sympathetic Ooh, okay all right let me shush interrogator 19 you're not going to let me go are you operate a torture chamber for profit with oh yeah interrogator yeah you're right okay and tear interrogator true um Nine. I don't know what nine. Why has charity gone wrong? All homeless. No, it's a. It's a bit. Yeah, we'll leave that alone. Uh, nine is is nine. A hag covert. <laughs> no, let's leave that. Thirteen. Um, sympathetic. Thirteen. Force others to suffer. I'm not too sure that makes sense. <laughs> Fourteen. Force the world into hell. Hellbinder. Okay. Hell. Hellbinder. 
the vellum is forcing. Hellbender, Hellbinder. I think Bender might actually work better. Let's do Bender. Let's do it a bit. Let's bend it. Hellbound, drag the world to hell. Um, I mean, there's a couple of ways it can go, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I, I have to. I have to stop because if I don't stop, I'm going to be late for work. <laughs> so I promise to keep working on this when we come back in about two months and um, if I get some free time which is very very unlikely then I will do my very very best to update some more of it so we've done pretty well there's a lot of new ideas there that weren't there before and there's a lot of work to be done but it's certainly on its way it's definitely it's on its way so it'll get finished Anyway, oh, oh, that was an interesting experience. So for those of you who are wondering what the heck is happening tomorrow, I should be talking about the golem. Golem, golem, we're going to do the golem. Yes, um, I've got some ideas for you. Uh, and for those of you who like the fact that I do biology of monsters, there's not really a lot of biology on a golem, but I do have something for for you that's that's that will definitely happen so a uh, big huge thank you to everybody in the chat if you've been watching or just commenting or just listening um, but particularly those people who have been taking part hey thank you for being here don't feel bad if I didn't take all your ideas sometimes things just don't gel in my head and in the middle of a live stream I'm trying to figure out what do I write down and what do I don't write down and Sometimes I come back to ideas and put stuff in. Sometimes I don't. It just depends. I'm always trying to build it so that I can use it. And if I figure if I can use it, somebody else might be able to use it. And that's really what I want to do. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Without my patrons, this this program would not, uh, would not continue. Like, I would not be able to continue this if the patrons were not supporting me. All the stuff we make on the live streams goes onto Patreon. Okay? It's all going there. If it's not there, it's going there in the future. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. And um, look, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. As long as your neighbours are not nemesis, henchmen, uh, masterminds of some kind, uh, bent on control and domination, destruction of your existence, be nice to your neighbours. As long as I'm not doing that. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.